Uh, hi, uh, I'm Nicole Alvarez from the world famous K Rock. Happy Weenie Roast, everybody. I'm here with Wesley and Jeremiah. These are the Lumineers. Um, if somebody, like, let's say early 2000s when you guys met and you started writing together and you were working three jobs and you were hustling and, and couldn't pay bills, if somebody knocked on your door, let's say God, and said, one day you're going to headline a show by the ocean with Snoop Dogg and Limp Bizkit, <laughs> what the hell would you have said to that person? I think I'd be more shocked that, like, more people came to this little interview than our shows back then, so this is, uh... Yeah. <laughs> this is cool. They just started showing up, but really, if somebody told you you're going to yeah. play with Snoop and Limp Bizkit one day, would you have been like, get, get out of here? I think I'd ask, what band am I in <laughs> that's happening? Because I couldn't be my own band or our band, yeah. so... Yeah. I've been uh, dying to talk to you because I'm a big Game of Thrones nerd, or I was. No, I still am. I'm wearing some House Stark socks. Um, yeah, my Us favorite, too. My favorite part of season eight, even though it wasn't on the show, was Nightshade. You wrote the most beautiful song. Oh, I Nightshade, yeah. It was, it, I, so I listened to it before I watched every episode of the final season because it just got you in the perfect mood. How'd they approach you to do that, and are you guys fans of the show? Yeah, we're, we're real big fans of the show. Uh, they just said that they wanted music inspired by the show and if we had anything. And it was kind of a last minute thing. Um, came together and we gave it to them a while ago. And then it came out, I want to say a year and a half after. So um, we were joking because we saw this For the Thrones ad all over the city and yeah. that was the hook of our song. So we're yeah. like, you're welcome, HBO. So good. Yeah. I wanted it but to I end mean, up. It's not that original, but we were like, we, we took pride in the It was kind of <laughs> weird though. I mean, Winter is Coming was the three word slogan of Game of Thrones. Yes. And then we sent them the song and like that week it was like For the Throne. Which is the refrain of the chorus, basically. I'm telling so. you, it's the <laughs> it was the best part of season eight, even though it didn't end up on the actual show. I mean, it is a magnificent song. I just wanted to get that out of the way because I'm such a huge yeah. fan, and it really did enhance my experience. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we loved the show. We didn't we didn't know what to make of the last season, but they spoiled us with the previous seven, so we were fine. Uh, what did you use for inspiration for that song? Like a scene, a character? Yeah, our our producer on the last two albums really loved uh, Uncle Benjamin. Yeah. Uncle Benjamin's that guy who comes in. No, I know Uncle Benjamin. Yeah, enter, like the thing. I don't yeah, even know what yeah. that weapon's called. I don't either. It's on it's fire. Like that and spiky it fireball thing. Yeah, yeah. And so a lot of it was about that because I just like that scene where interesting Jon Snow is rescued and Uncle Benjamin kind of takes the fall. He saves the day twice actually, but we can talk about Game of Thrones later. I want to talk about the new album. Um, I want to start with Gloria because I remember I first heard it and the melody is pretty upbeat. Yeah. Um, and I was so in love with the melody that I didn't really listen to the lyrics right away, so it took me about a month, and then I was like, oh wait, she's a she's an alcoholic, I think. And then when you released the video, it affected me very much, that entire story, so I wanna know about Gloria Sparks, correct? I wanna yeah. know about that character, and then we'll lead into the new album, which to me is genius. Yeah, you're. I mean, you're a mother, so you know, I mean, uh, it's the video was designed, I think, to paint a picture of what was happening on on the song i mean we grew up going to dances they called them teen canteens in our middle school where we were dancing in nirvana and that wasn't what he was singing about wasn't all that pleasant a lot of the time Correct. but it was it somehow felt good to hear that and i think for us we didn't want to shy away from uh singing about it in the past but this time it was nice to like put it out there visually um the the character is is about someone in my family um, but I think Jared and I both share a sort of history with people very close to us battling addiction. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was about someone, you know, personal to me. And I kind of wanted to create a little bit of anonymity for that person. So Kay. I gave these characters different names and, and we created this family that kind of represents a lot of this stuff. So tell me about the album is called Three and it's because, uh, well, it's your third album, but it also has something to do with the fact that this album is going to be in three chapters. Tell me, tell me about it because you've taken, you're my favorite storytellers. I've always loved you guys, you know that. And you've taken storytelling and, and, and your music to another level. Now you're really developing this story, these stories. Um, so tell me, tell me about Three. Well, I think it's a good lesson in like save your notes, save your notebooks because <laughs> we, uh, we've been Jared and I started working together in 2005, yeah. like on music. We always, we've known each other for a long time, but that was when we started really working together. And uh, we had this idea of putting out like three short EPs that had, you know, 
I think at that time it would be five songs an EP. This time it's about three songs an EP. And breaking up an album into three parts. And then kind of enjoying the idea of it being with three chapters, with three characters, with each one being themed around one character. Um, without it being too, like, feeling like you're doing homework. You yes, know? <laughs> like, no, I get it. Um, keep it entertaining. It's supposed to be something you enjoy, but also this, like, if you dive in to it and go a little deeper, there's there's something there. There's something. We, we always liken music to, like, food. And, yeah. like, if it has, like, nutritional value, yeah. you know, or if it's just kind of, like, candy yeah. that you eat and it tastes like McDonald's. No offense. <laughs> but like no offense to McDonald's. Yeah, we're not sponsored by McDonald's. <laughs> no, 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 no offense. But, um, <laughs> Every once in a while, McDonald's comes through, I have a one-year-old, <laughs> and I'm sure he's going to love the Happy Meal. But, um, like, the idea that you'd want to eat it every day, that's the type of food that you want to consume. And with music, it's kind of like that. We wanted it to be, like, feeding us, you know, and uh, – putting these different layers in and if you dive in it's there or you could just casually listen like a a little i don't know a five-year-old could hum along and get the song too yeah jeremiah how do you feel about the new record and is it different than how you felt about the other two in any way yeah i mean i think this is our best record and i think every artist feels that way about their most recent thing but for this time it actually feels that way i can't put my finger on why but i mean there's probably a lot of reasons that subconsciously i've thought about i think writing this me and wes each had a little baby boy and i think we were pretty sleep deprived throughout yeah. the writing process but we made you know as a parent the free time is so much more special oh trust me i know so i know you know for our wives and to figure out a schedule to write this album it was really special to get together with wes you know it was the same thing that we got to do for a decade but then when you have a kid, you're like, oh, wow, this is really special what we get to do mm -hmm. in a very, like, kind of boring, lackluster environment. It's just a room with a piano, drums, guitar, and just me and Wes working on music. And with this one, the music, it seemed to, like, we hit our stride. Like, it, the music came out of us easier than previous albums. Yeah. I think, too, like, on the last album, Tour Cycle, we had a lot more free time. We had a uh, bus, more free time in the hotel room, so more time to relax and kind of write independently so when me and Wes started writing this third album we had all these ideas that I think were even more fully formed and when we started writing it was just just fun to do it again and like I came up with a lot of different piano that I would never come up with on the first two albums and I think when we worked together the eyes the ideas they just stuck they just were faster together and that was really lucky to be a part of that. you think the sleep deprivation like breeds creativity in some way or something it opens other doors in I your mind good crazy yeah yeah i think when your back's against the wall a little <laughs> bit though like i think if it was just we had all this free time and we're like okay we just had two very successful albums or whatever um the excitement or that trying to reach for something instead of just being give, give uh, being give, given to you i think it was really important that we we had to kind of like deal with that as a factor as a variable that all parents have to deal with and i think in a way it made the writing process even more special you've had such a beautiful career it's been a little over a decade and each album has had its own shine and its own moment and i feel like you guys are so careful about the process and it's just very poetic and it's so it makes me proud to watch you guys because i've loved you since the start what is one thing that you haven't done that you want to do that's on the lumineers bucket list i really want to I really want to meet Bruce Springsteen. We come from New Jersey originally, and uh, I hope that one day that'll happen in like organic, in an organic way. It's not like uh, seeing him in an elevator. I heard this story from this uh, this guy we did an interview with, uh, and he said he met him very quickly and was like, "Hello, hello," I'm uh, and he like <laughs> ran out of the elevator. I just want to say thank you to him and meet him briefly because it feels like a rite of passage for a uh, storytellers. New Jersey. No, and you're both storytellers. <laughs> story you're storytellers. Yeah. Yeah. And what about you? I have a I have something I want to say, but I don't know if it's sacrilegious to uh, just say it. We're fa it's like family. It's there's just a guy. A safe space. There's a radio host. His name's Howard Stern, and uh -huh. me and Wes are from, <laughs> 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 we're from from the East Coast, and we grew up listening to uh, Mr. Stern talk on his radio. Yeah, and uh, that'd be pretty cool to be interviewed by him if he's ever. Oh, well, you're, be interested, you're putting it out there, so I feel like there's enough energy here to manifest <laughs> it. Um, thank you for coming. This is the first time that we've played on the ocean. Yeah, this is you beautiful, beautiful scenery. Yeah, you've played so many K-Rock shows, and you've been so good to us, and watching you guys just continue to grow and kick ass is just phenomenal. So thank you very much. The Lumineers, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And you guys, thank you for coming. I'm Nicole Alvarez. We are live at Weenie Roast. Bye for now.